me come out here and tell our people, hey, listen, you are an Israelite according to the Bible, and there's certain things that, that's required of us, our people don't want to hear because they think as the Bible as what? They think of it as the white man's book, as what they used to control us with in slavery, all these different narratives, as a fairy tale, all these different things, but this is the most pro-black book on this earth. But our people don't know it and read it because these churches are giving us an illusion of what God looks like, and it's not according to the scriptures. Read what you got. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou would not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So God said, if we don't want to listen to the Bible to observe and do his commandments, then there's going to be curses that came on us and overtook us. All right, so do you think that us knowing every single stat about the Super Bowl is a blessing or a curse? It's a curse because all that money they make in the Super Bowl, is that benefiting us? It's not benefiting our communities at all. All these monies that these nations are making off of Valentine's Day, is that benefiting our communities? No. All they teach us, what are, they, what are some of the main things they teach us in Black History Month? Martin Luther King, what else? Yeah, they teach us about who made the stoplight, who made peanut butter, all these different things, the straightening cone. But meanwhile, they don't know, they don't teach us that we are the Israelites and we're the greatest people to walk this earth. They're not teaching us that history. They're not teaching us that Jesus Christ is a black man and he came from the same bloodline as us. They're not teaching that stuff in the world. So now we got to ask ourselves, why are they not teaching us who we are as a nation of people? They're afraid of what? I'm a, you know who J. Edgar Hoover is? He was the director of the FBI. You know what he said the most dangerous thing in this whole world is? He said black unity. Meanwhile, this man was alive during, uh, what, the World War II, World War I, one of those. He was alive through a lot of wars, but he said the most dangerous thing to this world is Negro unity. So now we got each other that we can't even correct each other today. So how is it that we're going to unify when we can't even look at ourselves as gods? Well, we don't even know that we are God's chosen people. We don't know that God has a chosen people. How are we going to unify now? We can't. So now, what do you think is the next step of what we need to be doing in order to change the narrative in our communities? We need, that's a great answer, bro. We need to understand who we are. A part of us understanding who we are is what we just read. Read it one more time. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou would not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. First, we need to sit back and examine ourselves, man. Listen, the conditions that we're living in in the black community is a curse. How we got the worst educations, we got the worst food, we got the worst medical, we got the worst everything. We got to sit back and examine why we living in these conditions and nobody else. What club was that at? <laughs> that was admit that uh, a lot of people don't even realize they... I've called her, she hasn't responded. I've called her more than a few times. But the Zulu nation, I'm like, what the hell is this? I know nobody know what I'm talking about. You'll leave me on the island by myself. I don't know what the hell Bishop's talking about. That's what y'all do. Then after class, yeah, I knew what you were talking about. I just don't want to be caught out there. The hell is this? Get on my damn nerves. So read that again. When you go out to Overland Park, when you go out to uh, like 150th and Metcalf, what do you see out there? It's way better than over here. Are we living over there as a majority? No. So we got to sit back and examine why is it that we living in these conditions? Why is it that this happened to us and no other race on the earth can say that that happened to them? That's what we have to start doing. But our people don't want to do that. What we do, we buy the best cars. We are the number one consumer of Mercedes Benz, but we live in the hood. We are the number one consumers of Gucci and Balenciaga, but we live in the projects. We got to start realizing why are we trying to look better than the conditions that we're living in instead of just, could change, just changing our mindset and then we can change the conditions that we're living in. Why are we trying to look better than what we're going through? That's a curse of the mind. Watch, hold that, give me uh, Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 19. I'm going to show you what the Bible says about that mindset when we want to look better, we want to dress better, we want to all that. Let me show you one more thing before you go, all right? Let me show you one more thing. Let's get uh, Deuteronomy 76. Hold that. Deuteronomy 76. I'm going to show you. This is one of the most important things that you're going to hear in all your life. Read what you got. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art in holy people unto the Lord thy God. Now, it says these people right here on this side are holy unto God. Where do you see yourself? 
the top one, from the tribe of Judah, the same tribe that Jesus Christ came from. So he said, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, they are holy people unto God. The word holy means separate. He separated us from everybody else. Read. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So God said he chose us to be special above everybody else on the face of the earth. All right, so when you are special and God chooses you to be special, there's certain guidelines that you have to start living by. You have to stop abusing yourself, bro. I can't, you walked up with the block of mouth, you're killing yourself, bro. And because I want better for you, I got to tell you, bro, you're destroying your body when you're doing that. And God is looking at you like, man, how can you be special when you're destroying yourself with something I didn't make till you put in your body? That's how you got to start looking at yourself. God said you are special above everybody else. A special person walks different than everybody else. They talk different than everybody else. They're not doing the same thing as everybody else is doing. Does the king do the same thing as the as person at the bottom of the uh, society? No, so we got to start thinking like that. We are the nations of kings and priests. We got to start moving that way. What is a nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is you. It's nation time. Oh, you know